Hello friends, I'm Swapna Shetty. In this video, we are going to learn about serialization and how to use file class. Serialization is a process of storing objects into a file. For example, if you want to store some structured data in the files, like some employee details, like employee identification number, which is of integer type, and name which is of string type, salary which is of float type and date of joining, the job that is of date type in a file. This is very well structured and got different data types. So to store such data in a file, we need to go for serialization. And first thing is we need to create a class which implements serializable interface. Serializable interface is located in java.io package and it is an empty interface that is it has got no methods inside it such methods are called marking or tagging interfaces basically used to mark the objects of a class for a special purpose for example if a class implements serializable interface that means that class objects are meant to be stored in a file moreover static and transient variables cannot be serialized the next step is we need to attach a file to the file output stream and attach file output stream to the object output stream. And using write object method, we can write the objects into a file. So let's see an example of it. So first, in IO stream samples, I just create a new class called store object with a main method and within a package com.educators. So before starting writing about store object method, I require a class which implements serializable interface. So for that I write class employee implements serializable, which is an IO package. Now here I have three instance variables namely ID name of the employee and the salary of the employee and write a constructor for it which is there in source add constructor using fields click on all the fields and say ok a default a parameterized constructor will be placed Next is I just write a method called display which just displays the employee information like ID tab name tab and the salary. Now I write another method say get data which gives the information of the data of the employee like I wanted to read integer name and uh, and salary from the user so for that I read data from the user so for that I require a buffered reader so buffered reader br equals to new buffer reader of new input stream reader read it from the keyboard that is system dot n Now, after getting a buffered reader object, accept employee ID, number, name, and salary from the user. So for that, just say enter ID and read it using br.readline, which is of string type. So I need it an integer ID. So just convert string to int. For that I am using integer.parseInt. Similarly, ask the user to enter name. 
name of the employee and read it in a string variable say name using br dot read line similarly as a user to enter the salary and read it in a float variable float sal equals to br dot read line which is of string type so convert string to float using float dot parse float so read read all the information from the user and finally return this object let us create an object here with all the details that is employee e equals to new employee of id name and salary and then say return e so since method is returning an employee so the return type of this method should be employee because the method is returning an employee object so br dot read line it is uh, throwing an exception say io exception so simply throw it out of a method now a class employee with details like id name salary and a method which returns an employee object and a display method which prints the employee information is ready now how to write these employee objects into a file that is for that we need to uh, accept data from the keyboard that is how many objects need to be stored so for that again i use buffer reader and now to store objects into a file i need file output stream file output stream fs equals to new file output stream of to which file i need to write so for that i am just saying obj file object file now attach this fs object to the object output stream which is located in io package object output stream of attach this object now ask how many objects to store to the user so read the number using br dot read line store it in a variable called n and convert string to integer using integer dot parse int now file output stream it is throwing an unhandled exception so simply throw it out of a method similarly object output stream it is throwing our io exception so simply throw it out of a method now traverse within the loop that is till how many objects the user wants to read uh, write into a file so for that i'm just using another for loop i less than n i plus plus so within the for loop i call that get data method so i wanted to call it using class name dot get data so declare this something like wait, employee dot so declare the method to be static so employee dot get data method would return an employee object so capture it in an 
employee objects ee so after getting that employee object write it into a file using os object dot write object method of ee Finally, close the file. Now let's say run as Java application. How many objects? I want two objects to be stored. So enter ID is one. Name is Suresh and some salary. Enter ID two. And name is like Rajni, and some salary. So, we have entered two objects details. Now let's check in the file whether. Got stored or not? For that, just say refresh. So you can file OBJ file here. So open it. So you can see the object information got copied into the file. Now, how do we read it from the object? So for that, let me write another class to read the data from the object. Read OBJ. From the file within a package, com dot educators, and say finish. So now in this read object for writing, we have used file output stream and object output stream. For reading, we use file input stream and the object input stream. So for that, file input stream fis equals to new file input stream and mention the file name that is object file next object input stream os equals to new object input stream of fis attach fis to object input stream we have got some compile time errors of throwing file not found exception and also IO exception. Handle them or throw it out of a method. And now we need a buffered reader object to read how many objects or simply to read all the objects from the file. I simply use read object method. So for that OIS dot read object method would the return type of read object is object. So I need employee object. So for that I need to type cast. So let me declare employee E. And here capture it in E. So for that we need to type cast to employee. So I a read object also throws one exception, say class not found exception, so simply throw it out of a method. Now to read all the objects, that is object return type is null. So till null, we need to read all the objects in a file. So for that, I use a loop. While e equals to was dot read object not equals to null. That is until of uh, until null till the end. We need to read. Simply, I call e dot display method, which just displays the employee information. Finally, close the file. OS dot close. Now let's see whether we can display the employee information which is there in a file. 
So you can see we got the information two objects Rajni and Suresh and also one end of file exception. We are getting an end of file runtime error that is end of file exception. So to handle this we simply write this entire thing inside a try block. Since we are getting end of file exception, I would simply write EOF exception. And simply I would say reached end of file. And I can also use finally block to close the file. So let's run. We can see we can handle the end of file exception. So process of reading the objects from the file is nothing but deserialization. For that we need to attach the object file to the file input stream and next attach the file input stream object to the output object input stream and using read object method we can read the objects from the file. Next is file class. It's basically located in java.io package and we use this class to know the properties of a file or a directory. So for that file class provides some methods like is file is directory. Is file returns true if the object file object contains the file name or some uh, a file name. If it returns true, if it uh, if it is a file, otherwise it returns false. Similarly, is directory returns true if the file object contains directory name, otherwise false. And to know the path of the file, we use or the file or a directory, we use the get path. Similarly, absolute path gives the path right from the root. And list method gives the string array which contains all the file names are, are the direct and the directory names. So let's see an example of using file class also. So for that I create another class saying file properties public static void main and within a package com dot educators. So now in this program I would like to know like display firstly I will accept a file name or the directory name from the command line and that would display the properties of that particular file. So for that I read a file name from the command line. So I just simply say string f name equals to read from command line that is the first argument so when you get a file create a file object using file class and pass f name to that so import from java.io package next is just print if print the file name that is f dot get name and print the path of the file that is using get absolute path and also we can print some information like if it exists or not like if it exists or not so I will simply say run as run as Java application So uh, I need to give an argument that is uh, from the command line. So first I'll go to the run configurations and give the argument as the file name as I would give something like my file.txt. So apply and then run. Yes, you can see that the file name is my file.txt and the absolute path of the file the right from H drive 
that is the root directory it is giving the path and it is returning true that is the file exists so now I would simply say that if the file exists I wanted to print the entries in that particular directory that is so for that I I'll read the instead of reading from the command line I'll ask the user to enter directory path as well as directory name and create a file using the path and the name for that I'll have to store first so string D path that is directory path equals to br so I need a br buffer reader object also for that so simply create a buffer reader object and say br dot read line would give you the path similarly read the directory name also we are not read line and now create a file using path as well as name so read line method is throwing some exceptions so throw it out of a method now file is created with using path directory path and the directory name now if that really exists that if the file or directory exists I would like to get all the entries in that directory that is using f dot list would return me a string array so arr capture it in an array next traverse that loop int i equals to 0 i less than arr dot length i plus plus while traversing just print the entries that is system dot 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 print ln arr of i so let me run this I would like to give the path as some C drive as the path and I have some folder called TS projects under C drive so the directory name is TS projects so it is showing me all the entries inside the project folder this is the name of the directory and this is the path of the directory and it exists it is returning true and all the entries so let's see whether we have all the entries in that directory so in under C drive I have TS projects in which all these entries are displayed here so this is the basic advantage of using file class so that's all with the session Thank you.